And so you're just feeling that movement and how it translates in the body as you then bring the soles of the feet onto the floor. So your tiptoes and heels and there's a little response there in the body. And then as the feet come into the floor, you can then start to gently push through the feet. A bit of a smaller response from the body, nice and regular and rhythmic rock. So feel the feet working a little bit, the legs, the lower back is, is just like a piece of paper in the wind, gently flapping. Your mind will wander off, so just bring it back to the rhythm if you remember to. Okay, and the whole of the body synchronized with the movement as if every cell within was able to move with this rhythm. And feeling into the body for how long you want to do it for with. After a maximum of a couple of minutes. But of course your body will tell you when you've had enough. With this gentle rocking as we begin to really focus in on the body. And when you bring it to a gentle stillness, or roughly about two minutes, you feel this response. And it's different for everybody, different people describe it in different ways. Stretch out your legs. And as you feel the body relax down, perhaps you feel tingling, perhaps it's more like heat, be any sensation, just notice whatever it is and become familiar with this feeling as the body automatically lets go of tension. Taking a deep breath in and as you breathe out, Again, just allowing the body to sink into the floor a little bit more. And then we're going to come into TikTok. Another really good one. So we've got the feet, the toes coming in towards each other, the touch, tick, and then talk release. Tick, talk release. Tick, talk. Release. So really make sure that that top is a proper letting go. There's nothing that your body has to do to make that happen. The muscles engage on the tip and then disengage on the top. Tip, top. And again, you're finding a rhythm that you like. Keeping it steady. Feeling into the body for any response that might be telling you that it's time to stop. Perhaps it's just an extra sensation that suddenly comes in, perhaps if it's a slightly deeper breath, something will give you the indication. And then we're going to just let go. And again, just observe a slightly different place that this sensation is coming from. Allowing your attention to fall on whatever is going on. Okay. We're going to do this next interesting move, which is a little bit of carrying on from last week, where we were dragging this leg up really slowly up 
from the ankle to roughly the knee or just above and then very slowly back down again and i'm i'm just demonstrating it sitting down but it is done lying down this one and then you swap side but what we're going to add to this week which is going to be quite interesting is arm movement so we're going to have the opposite arm coming from your side up so that you're going to then turn to look at that arm and then we're swapping legs and swapping sides and it's quite tricky when you first do this to get it synchronized but it's okay you can just start wherever you are so perhaps practice the legs a couple of times And once you've got those legs okay so i know what i'm doing with that and then when you've got the leg up in position by the knee bring the arm up to join it so it's the opposite arm you're looking at that arm and then you just swap everything to the other side and however fast you're going now i want you to really slow it down Slow it down to a slightly annoying pace. You feel that bit of frustration, like, oh, I wish I could go a little bit faster. I'll just do maybe one set at this really, really slow pace. And again, when you've done enough of those quite strong, just allow yourself to rest in between and just feel there's a little change there. We've worked on a little bit on left and right brain connectivity. Nice big breath in just to give it time for those neurons to make the connections and to settle down. Once you feel that that has kind of settled in a little bit, just wiggle those fingers and toes. Just preparing ourselves to come up to sitting. So rolling on your side first, have a little moment. Doesn't matter which side. Have a bit of time there. And then you can come up sitting when you're done so i did forget to say at the beginning when i was orientating everybody that if you need to tell me anything i can see the chat on the you know so if something comes up just say good so i don't know if you feel that little shift but i feel it because i've not been feeling great where my brain's just gone oh okay i'm back <laughs> it's been a bit fuzzy as it tends to be when you've got an infection. So um, we're going to stand up in a second. And I think unless anybody has any particular uh, requests today, um, the plan will be to just bring a whole system down into a really relaxed place. So we'll be working on the two areas that do that, um, the lower half and the upper half of the body, and probably a little bit of left, right brain, similar to what we've done on the floor already. Um, but do put something in the chat if you want something added to that. So let's come up to standing. We've just had a little minute there to feel that standingness, sittingness, and now we can hopefully stand up. And we can start off as usual with tiptoes and heels. So if, it, if your nervous system does become a little bit overwhelmed, remember that the hand and feet, foot and mouth reflex is the one that can really calm everything. So at any point you can start to do tiptoes and heels. You can do the funny walk, which is where you walk on the edges of your feet and the insides of your feet. 
the heels of your feet and the balls of the feet and just bring your attention back to your feet so that all of these are available to you at any point in the class and then as you breathe out ah oh, you just feel the feet land and then we can bring our hands and just give them a good rub nice and easy and if we have time at the end, we might do a little bit of a hand massage. I've been finding that really nice because lots of gardening at the moment. And with nice warm hands, we're going to bring the real centre of that warmth there to the jaw joint. So you can see here the jaw joint. And I'm just letting my jaw relax. And as I do that, we're just going to have a little mindful moment to feel our feet feel the warmth in the hands and to feel the jaw release. Feet and hands and face. I feel safe. Feet and hands and face. I feel safe. And it's the hand, foot and mouth reflex that makes our body feel safe. The feeling of safety is not a, just a mental one, it's also a physical one. Okay, so it's good to remember that. Okay, so let's do a little bit for Morrow. So we're going to start by swinging side to side. One side, then the other. So we're getting into a nice rhythm again. And just take it and... Nice and easy, especially if this is the first time in ages that you've been working on this bit. It can take a few goes, but do mind your sense of balance. So find two points for your eyes to focus on from and to. If that's too much, still, then keep the head a little bit stiller, perhaps not looking so far behind it can be quite helpful. Because we're going to do this longer than you'd expect. As a reflex move, they just we are aiming for that two minute mark. But of course, if anything happens, it makes you feel like it's becoming a bit dodgy, then we're going to stop. So let's just bring that back to the centre nice and slowly, so don't stop all of a sudden. Bring it back to the centre. Good. And just see how that feels. Feel into your feet and your hands and your jaw and take a nice breath. Lovely. So we're just going to have a little bit of a test actually to see you know, what happens when we really test our brain and our body connection to what part of us gets tense trying. So this is a nice little exercise to try. I'm going to bring, I'm coming close to the camera so you can see, we're going to bring the hands together so the, big, the thumbs are up and the fingers are down like that. And I'm going to tuck one away and the opposite. So we've got the opposite thumb and little finger up. Simple as it sounds, all we're going to do is swap. Swap. Now, it sounds simple, but it's not, right? So what, what the whole point of this is not just to be able to get it. I've got two fingers out. Is to, to be able to notice what's happening in your jaw your hands, in your body, you know, where are you getting tense? If it all goes horribly wrong. <laughs> I've been practicing this as well. Good. And you'll see that, you know, the more you do it, the faster you get. So here I am, my brain connections are coming online a little bit better now. Oh. She said, yes, I'm not concentrating and that's what happens. Good. So, of course, when I do this, what happens is my jaw gets really, really tight. And I'm sort of crunching my teeth in desperate concentration. 
So I know then to look out throughout the session, whenever I'm doing any yoga, like what's happening with my jaw? If it was your shoulders, if you were sort of Ooh, holding your shoulders, we go, Ooh, you know, again, throughout the session, just remind yourself of things that help to release the shoulders. And it could be that you were holding your lower back and your abdomen in and going, oh, I can't get this as well. So that's, that's why these little tests are really good because they give these little indicators of where your tension is. It could also be, you know, you're frowning a lot. That's another good one, facial reflexes. Okay, so let's see as we go through the sun salutation, if we can keep our attention on this part of the body that we've just discovered might be likely to get tense. We're gonna do an, a nice sun salutation for the hormones. and just get the endocrine system just flowing a little bit. I think with this heat, there's a little bit of dehydration going on, so it might be really good. So we'll just bring the hands by our sides. Again, have a moment of awareness, feet and hands and face, take a breath. And then as you breathe in, we're going to bring the arms up, bring the palms together so you feel the warmth of the hands as they touch you. Look up, so we're opening out the thyroid, reaching up, opening under the armpits. Taking a nice breath in to open the breastbone and the thymus gland. And then as you breathe out, bend the knees and we're going to fall forwards. And here we're closing everything off. So we're closing the chin in close the thyroid, the thymus gland is closed, the glands in the thighs are closed, and then we're going to open again. So as you breathe in, push with your hand, and we're looking up and opening out that thyroid, and as you breathe out, you come and close everything again, and this time we place the hands on the floor, and we're going to take a step back with one foot and then the other, and we've got a plank here, and the purpose of the plank is to get the blood going a little bit. We get the heart going here so that, you know, some of the toxins that we might expel during our pumping of our glands gets a chance to be worked out of the body. But you don't have to do it if you're hurting in any way. Dropping down onto the floor for the cobra. Feet are on the ground. We're going to squeeze the adrenal. So think about where you're squeezing as you come up. You're opening the thyroid and the thymus gland by pulling the arms back the shoulders sorry back and then as you breathe out we're going to come first into child pose to stretch out the lower back those adrenals that we've just stretched and then into downward dog so we're inverting then those glands and just letting everything flow down in a slightly different direction is really healthy getting things flowing yes yeah, and a couple of breaths there to let everything calm down and then when you're ready we're going to take a step forward and then another looking up first to open out the thyroid the thymus gland breathing out dropping down letting the head go and then uncurling, opening out the arms to the side to get the underarm gland stretching up. You're looking up, opening that thyroid. Nice big breath, bringing the hands down into the prayer pose, using the thumbs then to massage the thymus gland here. And this is a really important gland actually. I find that if you massage this often, if things are stuck, it hurts a little bit and sore. Okay, so that's the first round. Next two rounds, we're going to add a little bit of groin stretching. Okay, so big glands here, and they get a really good stretch. They really help to flush things throughout the whole system. So it's exactly the same, just add a couple of additions. Breathing in, looking up and back, stretching out of the armpits, opening the thyroid, spinous gland. Breathing out, forward bend, tucking the chin in closing everything in breath pushing with the hands to open out the neck and this time as we step back we step back one leg drop the knee lean forwards to stretch that groin and just give it a moment it does take a little while this one to work its way through Good. 
And then we're going to bring the hands to the floor. Bring the foot behind. We've got a plank here. Again, for as long as you think gets your heart going. Just a little bit. We don't want it pounding, but just enough. And then we're going to drop down. We've got cobra to squeeze the back. Breathing out, child pose. Just for a moment. Just finish the out breath there and then coming up into downward dog for the rest of the breath. Lovely. And then the same leg that went back is now going to come forward. So you can drop the knee. That's the easiest way to bring it forward. Or you can just swing it forward. And then we're going to lean into this side now. So it should be the other groin that you're stretching. That's the way to know if you're getting your legs confused. Have I done this side or not? Is this groin really tight? And if it is, then it's probably the right one to do. Good. Give it a little moment and then we tuck the toes under and we bring the back foot forward into a nice forward bend. Feeling those feet now on the floor, feeling your hands, checking in with the part of your body that you sometimes tense a lot, the jaw, the back of the neck, the shoulders, wherever it is. Take a breath and then arm curl. Bringing the arms out to the side to stretch in those armpits, looking up and back, opening the thyroid. And as you breathe out, hands and a little massage here in the thymus. Good. And taking a breath. Okay, we're going to do one more and we're going to add one more thing. Same movements, just an arm movement we're going to add, which is really helpful too. Good. So breathing in, bringing the arms up, looking up and back, really stretch out that thyroid now and lift up those arms. As we're getting warmer, we can just put a little bit more into it. As we breathe out, tuck the chin in, close everything off. In breath, looking up, push with the hands, opening out again. As you breathe out, step back with one leg. It doesn't really matter which one. We're going to lean forward, and this time we're going to come up and bring the arms up. And here we've got that arm movement, stretching out of the armpits, looking up at the hands. We've got the thyroid, the thymus gland opening, and that little hand really stretching. Lovely. And then we bring the hands down and we come to plank and hold that. Get that heart rate up. And then dropping down. Breathing in. We've got the cobra pose. Looking up and back. Squeezing those adrenal glands. And we're going to come back into child pose for a moment for an out breath of course if you're feeling like you need to stay for a few more breaths there you can or you can come up into your downward dog and invert everything whichever leg went backwards it's the same leg that comes forwards now Leaning into that groin, breathing in. If you want to use the arms, looking up and back, stretching out. Really feeling those glands get stretched and opened. And then coming into a forward bend when you've had enough. Feel the feet land, let go of the head. Everything closed off as you uncurl, opening out the arms, looking up and back. Final out breath to bring the hands here. And again, give that, and if you had a little bit of soreness there at the beginning, you might find that that's gone as things have just shifted in that waterworks, which is really nice. <sighs> Lovely. Okay, that's the end of the hard work for tonight. <laughs> oh.
Uh, but I do feel better. It's funny, isn't it? When you've got a bladder infection, sometimes just getting things moving is really good. So let's do some really nice relaxing stretching forward bends. Let's take our attention to our feet and just feel how grounded they are. And then we're going to bring the hands in, interlace our fingers, turn them around and bring them up. And we're going to try and sort of separate the lower and the upper half of the body. So imagine that the lower half of the body is made of steel and is sinking into the floor and the upper half of the body is cloud. And <laughs> as you breathe in, it's just floating upward. There's a real sense of separation. Then we're going to go slightly to the side. Doesn't have to be a big movement. Keep the legs still sinking. You'll be tempted to lift up somewhere. Sink those feet down, breathing into the side of the body. Nice and light, come back to the center as you breathe out. And again, breathing in that slight side of bend so you can feel that lower body really sinking down and all the stretching is happening from the waist up as you breathe in. Lovely. Come back to the center. Just bring the arms down, let's just let them rest. Oh, and you can just feel the shoulders sort of beginning to want to let go. I want a little one more for the arms and shoulders, and this is two arms up, one arm forward, one arm back, which we've been doing every week because it's a really good one for that left right brain connectivity, which is a request that I've had pretty much every week. So two arms up, one arm forward, one arm back. Look at that back thumb. Two arms up, back to the centre. Other arm forward, other arm back. Look at that back thumb. Two arms up. And arms down, look at the back thumb. Trying to get into a bit of a rhythm. Two arms up as you breathe in. Arms down as you breathe out. Breathing in and up. Breathing out and down. Breathing in and up, breathing out and down. Keep going. Now the idea is that you do keep going until it does feel like your arms are going to drop off. And when that feeling comes in, it's quite distinctive. It's this fatigue in the shoulders. That's sort of the sign then that you've done what you needed to do. And then you're going to bring both arms up to the center and then let them hang by your sides. You just have that real oh, moment of looseness. It is a reflex move, so there'll be a little moment there as well, something going on in the brain and the body. And let that come into your shoulders. Let the shoulders feel released from the neck. And sort of wiggle your neck and go, oh, look, the shoulders are released. And that. Good. Lovely. So first forward bend, let's bring the hands behind the back and interlace the fingers. We've got shoulder blade squeeze hold. Let's see how your shoulders are. Here, yeah, so let's try and open that thymus gland out. So think about having the thymus gland here in the center of the chest and it moving forwards as the shoulders go back. Good, and you can breathe in with it. And lift the arms a little bit to get it a little bit more pronounced. Couple of breaths. If you look up, you get the thyroid also opening. And then if you bend the knees, as you come forward, bend, try and keep that thymus gland, thymus gland sorry, open and tuck the chin in. Now remember that orangutan arm feeling just after this, the exercise we did where the arms felt nice and heavy and relaxed. Try and bring that feeling into your arms and shoulders as you breathe. And the breath feeling like it's opening that thymus gland. The out breath releasing the shoulders. And then when you're ready, we're going to push up with the feet. You can keep the arms where they are, you can let them go. It really depends on how your shoulders are. If they're screaming at you, you often just want to let them go and let the arms release and sort of swing. Lovely. 
Okay, so we're going to take that a little bit deeper. So when we stretch the shoulders, we're not really getting so deep into this area. We're going to try that with a twist, a forward bend twist. With the feet a little bit slightly wider apart than normal. This gives a bit more stability. You can tiptoe and heel. You can go side to side just to make sure that you know you're balanced between both feet. And so we're going to again breathe in, looking up and back. Bend the knees slightly as you breathe out. That gives you a lot of balance into a forward fold. Now, because we're here, we might as well enjoy ourselves a little bit. Let's grab hold of the elbows and just relax for a moment in this forward bend. Take a couple of breaths, trying to remember what it felt like after that tick tock where the legs were really super soft and relaxed. The weight of your shoulders, the orangutan arms. And then we're going to bring one hand to the center of the feet one hand behind your back and then we're going to turn to try and look at the ceiling now when you try and look at the ceiling it's really easy to lead this with the eyes but instead think of, think as if you've got an eye in your shoulder that is trying to look at the ceiling of course the eyes will go up as well but it's the shoulder that's doing its work breathe relax those shoulders think about those lovely soft arms relaxed and heavy and if you want to you can bring one arm up at the very end to give that nice stretch but still trying to get that feeling of softness through the shoulders and arms when you've had enough of that one side come back to the middle just hang for a breath here again just for a couple of breaths to see the different and then swap sides. So one hand on the floor, the other hand on your back, pushing through the shoulders, rotating that eye on your shoulder, looking up at the ceiling, ending with the arm coming up. Couple of breaths, and again, just finishing off by hanging. And letting that integrate from here. I'm going to bend the knees right down, bring the hands to the floor. Step back with your feet. And we can come into a nice downward dog. And you hopefully feel that there's a softness in the shoulders that wasn't there when we did this sun salutation earlier. And we can just let the body relax a little for a couple of breaths. It depends how long you want to be there. I'm going to then drop down into child pose, but I'm not saying that you should do that now. I'm just dropping down because I wanted to have a sneak peek at what's going on. <laughs> you can stay for as long as you like in that downward dog. And then as long as you like in your child pose. Just giving yourself that time that you need in that lovely cocoon space. Now that our system is gently calmed. And this lovely inner space that we create for ourselves. We've had enough of being there. You want to move on to do some more things, then the best way of letting me know is if you sit up while I know you're waiting. Great. Just about to see everybody. I can't quite see you, Imogen. You've got the light behind you, so it's difficult. Oh, you're there. Okay, good. <laughs> Great. 
Okay, so we're just sitting on the floor for this next part. So we're just doing our sitting part. And we're just going to um, do a little bit of butterfly here. I know this is one I really need to do that's hips are getting a little bit stiff, which actually for me is not such a bad thing. because they can be a bit too spongy after all these years of yoga. So we're lifting and letting go. Lifting, so the soles of the feet are together, Imogen. So if you bring them to touch, that's it. Yeah, cobbler pose. Lift and drop. And we don't need too many. It's really just to remind the hips to let go. When you have finished doing that, just close your eyes for a moment and just remember that moment after the knee bend rock at the start or the tick tock. And just remind yourself of that softness of leg that we had. And with that real softness, we're going to start to circle little circles. Really small. And as it gets a little bit bigger, it's like you're spiraling out as things begin to release. Nice and slowly and mindfully going through the body, just feeling the bits that are a little bit tight. And just like earlier when we were doing that funny finger trick, you know, which parts of you respond to that inner tightness in the hips? Or do you clench your teeth? Do you curl your toes? Do you tuck your, I do my chin up. Oh, hold my chin right up. You know, what, what are you doing when things get a little bit difficult? And then at some point we need to change direction. So just thinking about that. Going the other way. And trying to keep the legs as soft as possible. It's like they are joined to you by a blob of jelly. You're just gently massaging that blob of jelly. Yeah, nice and soft in there. There's just a little warm up for what we're going to do next. Good. And then spiraling back towards the center just before you finish. So that when you do finish, you are really nicely placed in the center of the sit bones. Think about letting go of those legs again. Good, and then we're going to lean forwards. Uh, you might not lean forward very far, it doesn't matter how far you go, as so long as you get a nice stretch and you can handle the stretch so it's not overwhelming you, you can feel it, but you're able also to work with it. And then as you come into this stretch, there's various things that we can draw upon in our previous experience in this class. So we could think about hmm, doing TikTok in our head. We could think about doing the knee bend rock. Or we can think about doing the butterfly stretch, the lift and drop, lift and drop, which is actually very similar to TikTok. Just breathing and releasing. This one takes a little bit of time. It's always good to just stick with it. And of course, when you feel the need to come out. We're going to use our hands to bring up the knees. 
And then we can have a little hug here. We're going to hug our knees. Tuck the chin in. And you can, if you, you might be able to rest your forehead on your knees. This is the upright version of child pairs, and it's also a very nice place to be. So just a few breaths here. Relaxing those legs, letting them go, letting the hips soften, the sitting bones sinking into the ground, the head becoming heavy and the shoulders being soft. And thinking about your feet and your hands and your face, your jaw. This little inner world of ours, feet and hands and face, I feel safe. So just enjoying that moment for as long as you need to. When you feel ready, you can let me know just by sitting up a little bit. Ah, lovely. Okay, so let's do a little bit for the upper half of the body again here. So we're going to do the spleen rock here. So we've got our right hand comes just below the rib cage where our spleen is, hence the name. <laughs> the left hand is on our right elbow. Yeah, that's it. So it's right hand, left side. Yeah. That's it. And then we gently start at the most minuscule rock. So just like all the rocks, it's effortless. It's rhythmical. Feels easy. Going into a rhythm. Maybe we even we can close our eyes and take our attention within. And find this point of origin of this movement somewhere deep in the heart space. Again, we just make sure that it's the movement is being managed from the center of the heart space, not with your neck or your head. So you're basically hugging your arms and sort of pulling on that one arm. Okay, and just feeling the warmth that comes into the breastbone. And there will come a point quite soon when the body will know that it's done its share, it's done enough. So look out for the signs. It can be just a slight intake of breath, slightly deeper breath comes in, a tingling sensation or a feeling of just wanting to stop. And at that point, you do, and you take a breath and you just wait for it all to integrate. Let me just have that little moment. And again, it's another sensation that we want to really imprint into the body and remember. That's a really good exercise to do that one if you're feeling at all anxious. Lifesaver. <laughs> yeah, so we're just going to do a little stretch here. Now, I'm just going to see if you can see this. I'm turning around and I'm 
putting my thumbs in the little crease here that I'm going to make as I back bend a bit, which is exactly where my adrenal glands are. A bit closer, maybe. So when I back bend, oh, I'm going to go into the hollow there. And if you've done yoga with me before, you know we quite we spend quite a lot of time trying to find these particular spots <laughs> to give them a massage. So we're up on our knees upright so that we've got the thumbs right in there and we're going to look up at the ceiling and push the pelvis forward as if we we're really trying to massage in that and you can just move the thumbs around a little bit and give those adrenal glands a really good massage it might be a little bit sore if you've been a bit stressed recently of course it's not a pose that you can hold for too long and then we're going to come into a child pose and feel them flush and let the arms come to the side and again just taking a couple of nice deep breaths There, and if your adrenal glands were very sore, you should be able to still feel them even as they flush out. A little bit sometimes when they're really bad, it's like, oh, I can't even touch them, <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> Great. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit more left to right work. One of the things that happens when we're stressed and the hormone mix changes in the body. So the adrenals are pumping out, we don't have much serotonin dopamine in, in our body, is that this left right brain disconnects. And that's why we always make bad decisions when we're stressed generally, you know. Um, <laughs> so this is why I think they go together really well. So we're bringing the system down into a state of calmness and, and also reconnecting our brains a little bit so that we can sort of feel back to being ourselves, our usual selves when we're not in stressful mode. Um, so, you know, this is why it's sometimes quite nice a little bit of both. So what we're going to do is a little bit of, of twisty side bending. This has been going on for a few weeks now in my classes. It's one of my favorite stretches. The easy version of this is one leg straight, one leg bent. You can, however, do it with both legs out. And that all depends on whether or not you want to have a little inner thigh stretch or not <laughs> while you do it. Okay, I'm going to show the easy version. Lovely. So we're going to turn and face the, what I call the stumpy leg. Okay, so here's our twist. We've got the twist here as we face that leg and then with the opposite arm we're going to slide down the long leg as far as we can go Good. and then this arm here is going to come up and over to give us this side of bend so we've got side of bend twist but this is where the atnr also this left right brain connectivity stuff comes in so whichever arm you're, you've got up in the air, I've got my right arm up, I'm going to turn my eyes and only my eyes to look to the right and just catch something like the door handle or something to look at. And breathe, don't forget you're stretching as well as looking. Relax your legs, think about those points of tension, where have you got tense trying to do all these things at once? Maybe your toes are curled or your hands or your jaw is snap shut can you keep your eyes on that point or do they keep roving around and then in one nice swift movement we're going to come up with that arm swap the legs around turn to face the stumpy leg come down the long leg bring the other arm up Again, find a point on the left for me. It might be the other side for you on the left to look at. Try to keep the eyes on that point, focusing. Okay. 
as you let the body relax, the legs relax, the breath come in. I'm going to twist and a sideward bend, and again, just seeing how long you want to be there for. And quite often when we've been using the eyes like that, we feel a little bit cross-eyed when we come out of that. So bring your legs to a comfortable position. Let's rub the hands, keep them nice and warm. And then we're just going to place them over the eyes just to let them relax. And again, feel your jaw relax. Your hands are warm, feel the feet, so feet and hands, face, feet and hands and face. I feel safe. Lovely. So I hope you can feel it too. You know, our system is really beginning to shift gear now into a much more relaxed mode, which means it's time to lie down and do lazy yoga on the floor. <laughs> so let's come into a lying down position. I'm going to turn the slide. So this is a, a little routine that I do in, all, in my, most of my classes towards the end. Um, so perhaps and you're beginning to know, but Claire, you might not know that you want to have your blanket within reach so that you don't have to get up <laughs> afterwards because you're not going to want to. You know, you're just going to want to fling the blanket over you and go straight into relaxation. Just before we do, just to let you know that I am going to play the kalimba, so um, just test the sound. Is that going to be okay for everyone? Good. Great. Okay, so let's lie down. So we're going to come into a lying down position with the knees up to begin with. And we're just going to do the equivalent of the bottom roll this way up. So we've got the feet off the floor, the knees are up, the hands are on the knees. And we're rocking the legs side to side, really small rocking. Nice and rhythmic. Let your toes relax, your hands relax. Now we've done quite a lot of rocking and Quite a lot of different reflex moves today, so our system might not take too much more. So listen out for that telltale sign that you've had enough. You might be starting to recognize what that feels like. But whenever that has happened, for you, you really feel like you don't want to do anymore. Just stop in the centre for a minute. Take a breath here. Then place your feet on the floor and have a breath there. Again, just see that response in the body. Feeling the weight of your arms by your sides, and the shoulders soft, that orangutan arm feeling. I'm going to come into stretching the neck. So before we start doing that, we've got another little ATN arm move here, which I'm going to try and demonstrate from here. It's difficult because I'm a bit far away, but it's called the head rock. So it's a bit like all the other rocks, but it's just the head. Now it's not a big movement. You're not flinging the head right round. It's a really small movement, almost keeping the neck sort of straight and just having a little feel for side to side. A lot of left, right brain connectivity going in that one. So um, the ATNR can be quite frazzling as a reflex. So you know, your system might decide to do this for two seconds and then it's had enough and that is okay. It means you've taken what you need from it and that's okay. 
So see how long you want to do that one for. If you finish before everybody else, and you've had that little moment to integrate, to feel the change in the body. Just have a moment tuning into your feet and your hands and your face again. And then we're just going to come up into a nice bridge pose next. So we're pushing on the feet and we're keeping that lower back really soft. Even as you get to your highest point, tuck the chin in and try and feel the push through the legs and not the back. And then we're going to bring our hands, our thumbs, and find that place where we were having a good old poke around earlier with the adrenal glands and see if maybe they might want another little massage. They might not, they might be too sore. But it's quite nice to feel in and see. And then a really good massage there. You always know where they are because for most people they are generally quite sore so wherever the sore point is it's usually the right place tucking the chin in we're inverted so we're really allowing them to flush and then we're going to roll the spine back down when we've had enough of that and bring the knees in and give them a nice squeeze so that they can flush even better Deep breaths into that lower back. And then we can reach out our arms, leaving the knees where they are. If we reach out our arms to the side in a T shape, and we can choose which side we want the legs to fall on. Doesn't really matter which one goes first, so just let the legs Come over towards the floor. If the shoulder comes off, that's okay for now. Just let it come off initially. And then as you turn your head to face away from your legs, let the shoulder relax down. And of course, we've got a really good stretch here in the ribs. So as you breathe in, feel those ribs really expand. And as we did last week, after a couple of breaths, see if you can expand the breath right up into the shoulder joints. If there's any tension in the body, notice where it is. Is it the same place as always? Are you doing something with your jaw or your back of your neck, your hands or your feet? The legs are soft and heavy. The breath coming in nice and slowly, the shoulders relaxing. And of course, you know what comes next. So you can take your own time and decide when you're going to lift your legs up and when you're going to swap sides. And I'll leave that decision up to you. But just remember to let the shoulder lift off the floor initially and then drop down. Taking deep breaths. Into the ribs, into the shoulders. Loosening any bits of tension anywhere in the body. Again, making your own decision when you want to come out of that. Just gonna come back to the middle when you're done and just have a little moment to feel how that feels.
Right, and then the final stretch that we're going to do before we cover, and we could, you could actually cover yourself up now and then do this stretch. I've seen people do that. I think it's quite nice. Is the fish pose, which is a great hormonal exchange pose. So we've got nice relaxed legs. We've got to remember that. So you might want to do a couple of TikToks here. Just to remind the legs. Okay, I'm letting you go. Rolling the elbows under and looking up and back. You don't have to lift the head off the floor. You get the same hormonal response from the thyroid and the thymus gland and the adrenals by doing it. And a lot less stress actually for the moro area to just have the head on the ground. Breathing in to that chest. If it's a bit tight, you might remember that lovely spleen rock that we did that created all that nice warmth in the chest. And see how many breaths. It feels comfortable to hold that when you let go. Coming back onto the floor, you can feel the impact of that. Quite hormone. It's not as strong as normal because we've done so much on the hormone system already. And if you're not already covered and you can cover yourself without sitting up, now is a good time because you've got the spine beautifully aligned and body ready to relax. So why not stay? As soon as you settle down. Inviting yourself to really let go into this moment of relaxation, this time completely for yourself. Feeling the relaxed body, finding a little bit more comfort. Going through it just briefly, just to see if there's anywhere that could be adjusted to make you just that 10% more comfortable. Maybe it's a dropping of the chin, or releasing of the shoulders. Tuning into your breath. Feeling that incoming breath and outgoing breath as it enters and leads through the nostril. And every time your mind wanders off, just keep bringing it back to your breathing. Switching your attention from the breath, placing it in the palms of the hands. Noticing the temperature of the palms of the hands. Temperature of the backs of the hands. The fingers, the spaces between them. Noticing the tips of the thumbs, tips of the first finger on both sides, middle finger, ring finger, middle finger. Drawing your attention up through all the fingers, all the fingers and up. it come up through the hands and into the wrist joints.
And as you breathe in, let the breath travel down through your shoulders into the wrists and the wrists expand and open up. Drawing your attention up into the elbows. Breathing into the elbows and expanding all the space inside the elbows with the breath. Drawing your attention up to both shoulders. And feeling your attention come into the shoulders as you breathe in. And create space inside the shoulder joints. Bringing your attention to your chest. See how as you breathe in space and warmth and life force energy that is the breath comes in. Feeling the breath coming down with the diaphragm into the pelvis and filling the pelvis. Filling the hips, the largest joints in the body, so much space. Breathing into the knees, such a complex joint, so many different spaces and shapes in the knees. Bringing your attention down to the ankles. Feeling the space in the ankles as you breathe into them. The warmth of the soles of the feet. Tops of the feet. Feeling the toes. The spaces between. Tips of the big toes. First toe. Second toe, third toe, middle toe, little toe, all ten toes, both feet, both legs, hips and pelvis, lower back and upper back, shoulders, arms, hands, all ten fingers joint between the head and the neck. Find that place where the head and the neck meet and allow the breath to come in. Feel it expand, the jaw drop, the throat soften. Feel the space between your eyebrows loosen. The eye sockets become spacious, the area behind the nose, the palate, the inside of the head, spacious and soft, all the muscles in the face just letting go. It's expressionless. face and neck and jaw, shoulders and arms and hands, upper back, lower back, hips and legs and feet, whole body, spacious, breathe into warm and opening. And as you breathe out, take a moment to feel the support of the earth beneath you. Feeling how the whole body can just rest. Nothing you have to do, nowhere you have to go or be. This time is just for you. To rest. Breathing in, 
feeling the body. Open, spacious and soft. Breathing out, feeling the weight of the body as you are supported by the ground. If your mind is busy, keep bringing it back. Breathing in the softness and spaciousness of my body. Breathing out. Letting go into the ground a little bit more. And sometimes you may find that you can feel both the softness, spaciousness and the weight simultaneously. Softness and the weight of your body felt simultaneously. Just allowing your breathing to become just slightly deeper. You're in your own home, so you can just make the decision to stay. But if you do feel like you want to start to bring yourself around, you can start by moving your fingertips and toes. Preparing for movement with a few deeper breaths. And when you're ready to move a little bit more, you can have a little stretch out or roll onto your side. Just give yourself a few moments there.
I'm just going to come up and turn the recording on.